Whenever I left the Rockerby Ranch, or I, whenever I left the San Pedro, we went to work on the Rockerby Ranch again, and then I went back off to college for like two days, and <laughs> yeah, that's about my college career. Carried a four point though during it. I did. I had a solid hundred average those two days while I was there. Perfect attendance and everything. They didn't give me an award or nothing. Where's Andy? Well, I need an attorney to write them and get my reward. But I gave him to a friend of mine named Chad Wagley. Chad had, was a big uh, uh, sheep showman, and um, he was using Woodrow. Woodrow was a working cow dog, and the last thing I wanted to do was keep Woodrow in a cage or, you know, something like that. That dog needed to work. That's what he was made for. And so I gave him to Chad because I knew Chad would take care of him. And Chad said that he was the best dog in three counties, and at one time he was offered $8,000 for Woodrow because you could speed him up and slow him down when he was exercising those 4-H show sheep and stuff like that. He'd never bite them. He'd just listen to you. He was a fantastic dog, one of the smartest dogs I ever, I ever knew. And uh, at one time, uh, Woodrow was stolen. And um, the gate, you could tell it had been busted open, and they took him out of the yard, and Chad actually found him in a town 40 miles away, headed for home. He had got out, and Chad got him back, and Chad was telling me about that, and so Chad, not because of anything that Woodrow did, but Chad chained him up to, at his house with a chain, and he always, just when he wasn't there, it's not like he chained him up for good or anything like that, but he put a padlock on there because he didn't want to do without Woodrow. And one time I was home in Big Lake. And I wanted to see my best friend real bad. Kind of one of those low points in your life, and I know we've all been there. And, you know, there's just something about a dog or an animal that just does something that humans can't. And me and Woodrow had spent a lot of time together. And so I pulled up at Chad's house, and I could see this little furry thing laying underneath the, the porch. And I always whistled to him like, not real loud or anything, just like that. And I pulled up at the curb, and I rolled down that window. And I went, that head shot up. And all of a sudden, you seen him get up, and he hit the end of that chain so hard, I thought he was going to break his neck. He turned around, and he was biting the chain and just screaming, just whining to get to me, and with tears in my eyes, I drove off. I couldn't bear it any longer. Seeing him at Chad's chained up, even if it was for his own protection, just broke my heart. And I was going to get him back, but he was stolen again. The padlock was cut with a pair of bolt cutters, and we never saw Woodrow again. It was about a week after that. And, uh, but you know what? I, I couldn't imagine what Woodrow felt like chained up under that porch. Meant to do so much, but yet chained up, tethered, shackled, hobbled. Is that how you feel as a Christian? I mean, honestly, let's think about it. You don't have to answer it out loud. Answer it in your heart. Do you really feel like God's promises of you will soar on wings like eagles, you will Run and not fall? You won't faint? Is that really how you feel as a Christian? You go through your day and you just praise God because, I mean, you feel like you are boundless, limitless? Or do you feel chained up? Do you feel tethered, locked down, screwed down, shackled, hobbled? Is that really how your Christian life feels? Maybe it doesn't feel like that all the time, but does it feel like that sometimes? If so, I invite you to take a journey of discovery with me. I don't know how long this is going to take. With the Holy Spirit as our guide, we are going to learn how to unleash God's promises on our lives. Welcome to Unleashed. (laughs) Thank you.